my English was like, hello, <laughs> my name is Kemet. <laughs> <laughs> color red, yellow and blue. What do you think about bananas? I want to say yes, but I think no. <laughs> We're visiting today Keme. Is that how you pronounce it? Yes, Keme. Yes, but I'm used to be Kim, Kem, Kem, Keme. Anything goes. Is that an artist's name or is it... Uh, no, it is name? my name. Ah. It is my name, but I found because you can check the names of people living in Finland in the register online. So I checked uh, like a few years ago that there was no other Keme in Finland. I've never heard of Keme before. Okay. Yeah, it's not so common. Uh, so, and I also had a bit of a story with my family. So I just decided to, to go with Keme without surname as an artist. So I would say that I am a multidisciplinary artist uh, because um, I do many things. <laughs> I I write poetry mostly, um, other texts too, but mostly poetry. I I not so m much lately, but I have been quite uh, much into music, um, and then visual arts. I specialize in photography. Before coming to Finland, and for a bit, I was trying to only do photography and performance, but. In the past years, I just uh, started to mix everything because it feels more natural. I had this idea that that it was reinforced when I was studying also that you need to specialize in something. Yeah. Um, so I kind of stopped doing things that I was doing before, like uh, illustrating or painting or even um, Yes, mixing the text and, and the visual, things like that. I, I try to specialize in photography. I still continue doing some performance, but that was it. And now, after some years has passed, I just went naturally coming back to this mixing everything because it feels right, it feels natural, and who cares? <laughs> <laughs> true that <laughs> yeah yeah I can totally relate and and it is true that they kind of hint in your studies usually that it's good to to somehow specialize mm. in one thing I guess it's easier for people to remember you that way but yeah but sometimes it can feel restrictive I think I feel yeah we as a humans wants to classify and simplify everything as much as possible. Mm, yeah. But that's an utopia, right? It's like things are not so <laughs> easy. Things, things are more complex for sure. Yeah. Um, and artists often kind of try to have a bit more holistic view on things anyway. So it's hard to put that into only one path. I, I feel like, I don't know. I, I think that there are people that are brilliant. I, th I just think that the problem is that if you are doing it because you think that this is what you should do, but it's not coming from your mm. uh, experience, gut, soul, whatever you want to call it, because there are artists who only do even the same thing, you know, like the same kind of photography or the same, and they are amazing. But it was not my case. I was just trying to fold myself in a shape that was not mine. How long have you been in Finland? I asked that uh, to my f uh, some relatives this morning because I didn't remember <laughs> and it's going to be 10 years uh, next year like in 2000 I, I came in 2014 so it's we came in the same year oh yeah amazing well you know <laughs> so I thought it was longer it feels like <laughs> it has been a bit like a, hoo -hoo <laughs> a journey so I was feeling that I, I was here for over 10 years but not, not yet and what brought you here? <laughs> Love, partnership, yes. Uh, it, it was not not original story. Okay, let's uh, go through it. Um, I was, by that time I was living in Madrid. I would just finalize my master's in photography and I was living with my current partner, which is Finnish. Uh, we were living together in that little apartment, we were having these conversations about what do you want to do with your life, what I want to do, do with my life. Um, um, he decided that he wanted to study more, uh, to study luxury. Um, to study what? Luxury, like uh, building instruments. Ah, okay. okay. 
and apply for it. Uh, I think it was like in May. In June, we received a letter, like a paper letter, saying that you are starting the 4th of August. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> um, and I didn't have anything like super important uh, like to stay there. Like on that moment, I thought like, why not to go? And I was all, like, he will say like, you wanna come, please come. And I was like, yes, yes, I will go. We came to Igalinen which is a village in Pirkanma, like past, uh, past uh, Tampere and Hamenkuro and all that. It was a cultural shock coming from Madrid. I sometimes wonder if will we, will it be different if I will have studied in Finland, because it seems like the Finnish art field is quite focused. It's, I'm not saying that it's the only way at all, but it looks a bit more constructed to go from Alto or these spaces to to the art field than when you have not, not saying that it's easy if you come from studying in Finland, but sometimes I wonder if mm. that will have been different. Yeah, maybe it would have been an easier way to just meet people more because, yeah, it's yeah. not the easiest. It's not like you go to an art exhibition and start talking with people in Finland, but things are the way they must be, I mean, um, this is my path. Mm. That's good. And if if I bring it to the beginning of your path, how how did you became an artist in the first place? Was mm. it uh, <coughs> was it natural? Or were you like having thoughts of what to do? Do you have artists in your family? I don't have any artists before me in my family. I think I planted the seed and now m many of my nieces and nephews are into the art, arts somehow. I think it, it started as a kid, honestly, <laughs> even it sounds a bit cheesy, but um, as a kid, because I was um, quite uh, solitary for many reasons and um, I'm in the spectrum and like things like that so i will i will just uh, be at at my home uh painting i used to paint a lot and to draw a lot uh, i was i remember in the hospital i was like around eight or nine years old that i made this comic about uh diabetes diabetes because i was um uh, going through something not diabetes but similar and and they published it <laughs> in all the hospitals in, in the, where I was living. It was like quite much like a oh, wow. talented kid, I guess. Uh, and then I was much into music also. I even went to study classical music, uh, singing. And as a teenager, I will, my father had uh, his office at home at some point. So we have this huge copy machine and I will do fun scenes and, and a lot of stuff like yeah, it was always like that. But I didn't f present myself as an artist. I would just do art um, because I love to learn new things. I just love to learn. I sometimes, this is, sometimes I get very anxious because I know I'm going to die and I'm not going to have time to learn all the things that I want to learn, honestly. <laughs> like, oh no. Oh no. <laughs> so I, I would love to learn techniques and stuff. Yeah, my family was not like art, studying art, it was, it was not an option. <laughs> but they did support you in that? No way. No? No, no, but I, I left. Or just as a hobby, they were happy with it. When I was a kind of uh, teenager-ish, uh, I, we had some situation and I left home and I was squatting. Squatting? <laughs> squat, sorry. Yeah, squatting. Uh, in, in Barcelona. Um, and then after a year or something, when I was 17, I came back to my hometown and I uh, then went to study again. I started with something softer that was like uh, graphic design <laughs> because it was <laughs> like, uh, maybe you can't get a job after this. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I will go to night school to do arts. And at some point, uh, I was spot by a 
crit art critic and they asked me if they would like to, to exhibit me in the critics, uh, I don't know what is in English, critics sal salon and all the stuff yeah. that the critics pick mm. their favorites uh, and, okay. and I was a, a spotter with photography uh, and after that I, I kind of thought like maybe maybe this is <laughs> this means something so maybe i should study like formalize my studies in photography and then i went to study photography it's important to get this validation that you could do this thing especially like i was just posting uploading pictures in Flickr. like they spoke me like that i didn't even have a website so it was really it nice. meant it meant a lot and then I apply in, well, I study, I went to Madrid to study photography and at some point um, I applied for a master's program, but I didn't have any money and it was very expensive. So I just applied for this scholarship and I got it. And it was a big experience for me too. Uh, because um, it was an international master and I was my English was like hello <laughs> my name is Kemet <laughs> color red yellow and blue <laughs> something <laughs> like that so um, it was very meaningful because like I think maybe we were like two or three people from Spain and everyone else was from somewhere else and that was very rich for me to meet other people students and artists we will have every week a different photographer like Martin Parr or like coming to tell us their stuff or <laughs> make us what school was that uh, it was IED International School of Design but they have also photography ah uh, I think I've heard of that do they have also in Italy some branch yes yeah yes they do I didn't know I will end up here yeah and yes I, I finalized that masters and what the story that I just told you, we came here. Maybe it's good to mention that this is actually the first visit, which is not in a in a separate artist studio studio, but this is actually a home where you work now. It is. Um, I have had a few studios in Finland, especially here in Helsinki, and two years, uh, two thousand twenty-two, so one year. Um, almost two years ago, we came to this apartment, to this house, and by the time I had a studio in Lautasari, and I just decided to, to leave it uh, because uh, it felt a waste of money. I didn't have so much time to be there. And for me right now, time is the most valuable thing I have. We can talk about more uh, about the studio space a bit yes. later. I don't know, I just wanted to say that because it's, it's a first. <laughs> and uh, also this is, a, I, I'm testing a new way to record the sound. So I, I so hope we take the to the phone now. So I really hope it works fine. No, it should be fine. Okay. But yeah. So what are you doing at the moment? How, how are you working here? Mm, I kind of do very rough stuff, like for example, uh, I have a mask with a mask over there. I that kind of work I cannot do it here. Uh, and I it's go good to, to show this gorgeous, gorgeous to my partner's studio. Let's say does it does this rotate or am I going to break? No, no it, it doesn't. doesn't rotate. It okay. is so it is meant to be in um, ah on a stand. Yeah. So you look yeah. the idea. This is a whole piece. This is just one part. The idea is that you look at the mirror through this and then the mirror gets illuminated and, and you see your, yourself through through that. So nice. and that was I, I was doing it by hand, like with the scrappers and then like um, it's very, very polished. Yeah, a lot of sanding, which is the one of the things that I dread the most in this life, sanding <laughs> and somehow the majority of projects that I not painting or, or or like doing photography, I end up sanding and it's like, no, I don't want to sand in my life anymore. But there is Are that. you sanding by hand or like do you have a machine? No, I'm sanding by hand. And that's why, yeah. Yeah. Quite recently I had this exhibition in Kaisa. Uh, I have here still some works uh, from that one, uh, from my project Billy Aka, uh, which is based in 
Tales, the figure of non-male characters in, in Tales, and it has a, a lot of text material that I do with others through workshops and then the visual materials that I do inspired by the text material. For that, I, I have been embroidering a lot. I honestly discover embroidery for myself uh, here, these two years that I have been at home, because it's, some th it's a technique that you actually can do at home, any, anywhere. You can just leave it and continue later at night. Like when you are like a parent, like I am, or at least with the type of kids that I'm parenting, it's quite challenging to, to find gaps of time to, to and and you have two kids right i have two kids yes in my hometown there is a quite strong tradition of embroidery and i will remember my woman in my family doing it all the time at home always some embroidering so i just came back to that and even ask my my relatives to teach me and to help me and it was really rewarding. It was also a way to connect with people. This project has been going on since, um, uh, almost since I came to Finland. So it, at the end it has had a lot of um, techniques. And, and then I decided to also incorporate illustration, which I'm very happy I came back to that because I think I stopped illustrating or drawing when I started studying photography. Now the project is in an impasse. I just need to have a breather uh, mm, and I'm applying for grants. <laughs> like all of us. <laughs> yes, I, I strongly envision this project in, in book format. And then uh, right now I'm having a little exhibition with another artist, Arlen Tucker, in Kantonpa Galleria. Uh, and then there I was using watercolors. I was, it's more like reflections or and, and drafts and doodles about uh, a concept called Melan Force Cap, which is the feeling of being in between cultures. I created my own nation, my own country, which is called Ilema, uh, just merging all the uh, countries where my, my DNA <laughs> is coming from, my family is coming from. And Have you ever done a DNA test? Yes, that's another discussion. How, why, how is, is it worth it? What is, but, but yes, yes. And it was very interesting, like uh, <laughs> a lot of places. <laughs> like right now I'm just like, for example, this is like researching on, I put all the cities that my family has lived in together to make a skyline. I did the same with the with the country that I created and I decided that that is now my I'm coming from that that's my country. Took the letters from the countries and make variations and at the end it was sounding the best dilemma. Yes, I have been doing that. Uh, I, I was just building the, this little exhibition yesterday, so the last thing that I have been doing has been like playing with uh, notes, written notes and watercolors um, and right now I think I'm probably going to continue with illustration that the next thing and, and photography uh, together. Mm. Illustration on top of photography or? Yeah, but then there are other side projects that I'm doing with other people. I'm enjoying to, to lately, especially after Corona, to work with uh, with other artists, so we have this project that we are still like trying to figure out about caregivers and parents in the arts. Mm. Interesting. Yes, it is. Um, it is rough <laughs> to parent and, and and to be a caregiver in in society <laughs> in general, but I think that in the art field is even more it could be even more challenging or or it's just not contemplated. Which kind of uh, already covers part of my next question of the themes in your work. Okay. What is your work about usually? Do you have, do you have specific themes <clears throat> you're working with? I think that I always have felt art as something magical, <laughs> alchemy, something really, really magical and that connected also with the subconscious. So I think that the subconscious has been heavily in my work. 
an influence in my work, like studies about about it. Uh, archetypes. I think that archetypes are definitely in my work in some way or, or the other. Uh, for example, in this other project about uh, Biliaka, the tales, fairy tales and myths, I'm, I'm working with uh, fairy tales archetypes. So they are just another way of... Then the shadow, what is called in psychology the shadow. So you're reading Jung? Jung is <laughs> like, yeah, Jung is, uh, if you ask me about influences. I will. <laughs> <laughs> That's a heavy one. Heavy, heavy one. I think also, I don't know how present is uh, for other people, but for me, my work is a lot about connection. To connect with others, with the world, understand, uh, be understood. Uh, so for me, definitely connection. That's one of the things that I really enjoy doing in, in when I do performances. I've, I think that that is the format that I connect maybe more easily or more quickly with others. Maybe let's say uh, <laughs> um, unconscious shadow archetypes and, and connection. Mm. When you mentioned the, the, the archetypes and, the, and, the, and Jung, uh, there is this podcast I've been listening to lately, This Jungian Life. Mm? I you might ch want to check it out. <laughs> yeah, please. <laughs> let it, you yeah. give it to me later. Yes. Yeah, because it's uh, it's all about that. <laughs> mm. They have uh, they have so many episodes. Mm. Yeah, going back to your work and your practice, um, you mentioned that you're applying for grants. Is that your main way to sustain your practice? Do you do jobs? Mm. I discovered that in Finland. <laughs> you know, I was told, like, what? I can apply for grants? Wow. <laughs> That's cool. Um, and it kind of creates you the need to get the grant, which before it didn't exist. <laughs> so it was like, um, on one way, I, like, on one hand, every time I'm applying, I'm like, um, I know this is a lottery. It doesn't, <laughs> it doesn't matter if I get it or not. But then I get the no almost always. And it's like, oh, <laughs> no, <laughs> now what am I going to do? I still do it. I still do it. I, I, I cannot depend on grants to do my, my work. So I don't know, you just find a way. Uh, before coming to Finland, I used to have more odd jobs. I used to have a lot of these um, side works and, and jobs in Finland too. But less because I started to specialize in. I decided, okay, if I'm going to work in other things that are not uh, producing art, or I want to be still in the in the art and cultural field, so I just started to specialize myself in in that arena. I'm part of Mumalakax. Oh. I'm part of Kila. I'm part of uh, Stop Hatred now. I'm part of Catalyst. I'm part of uh, what else? Probably something else right now. I cannot remember. So it is important for you to have people around and other artists and kind of co-create or uh, maybe work together on some project. Maybe I don't know if co-create is the right word. Mm, I want to say yes, but I think no. Part of my practice is uh, not producing physical stuff, but doing these workshops. Uh, so there is already like working with others, uh, let's mm. say. Um, and then in, in I like when there is like a group project that I resonate with, of course, like I, I will say yes, I'm not saying that I don't work with others, but I really need to, to feel like the project is interesting and the people are interesting. I'm not like, uh, maybe it's, it's not my primary way of working yeah. with others. And also when sharing the studios or I like this setting that you are in a place where there are more studios, but you have your room, you have your, your space. Right. How do you, do you have a specific process you go through, like some routines that you, that you do? Tea. 
because uh, the one that I prepared before already got cold and that's in a way a good sign because I'm very focused <laughs> but the preparation of the tea like setting the tea having the first sips of, of it is like uh, grounding me depending on the projects that I'm doing I like to meditate what else um, I used to work a lot with a specific music I have like these playlists but nowadays I'm not doing it because I don't want to be influenced by the music that I'm listening to <laughs> I don't know if it sounds mm. very weird or not uh, so I have been lately trying to work either in silence or with sounds that are not music okay I like to to put all the materials that I'm gonna need all the tools I'm gonna need just there uh, so you have an, uh, an idea beforehand what exactly you are doing and what exactly you will need yeah probably I will need more things and maybe I will not use the ones that I pick but you know uh -huh. all this preparation of the space okay I'm going to do that I need um, this scrapper or this pencil and I will need oh probably I will need water and I will need that and that and then I place it very in a very nice way so yes I'm just losing time maybe or I don't know <laughs> It's, it's uh, a way of... Um, or just getting in the mood of it. Yeah, definitely. How, do, how does it work now and that you work at home with these things? Well... Is it different? It has changed a lot. Uh, not so much the beginning or how do I start working, but definitely how to continue. Because before, in the studio, I will just leave the stuff as it was. And if I need to go another place, home, if I need a break. Now that's a luxury. So every time I'm just gonna stop, uh, I need to um, pack everything again. And, and yes, I cannot have stuff around because my kids are little and they are going to mess everything or they can hurt themselves. Or So I just need to... <laughs> so that's a new routine that has been developed. Yeah. <laughs> When I focus on something, I can be hours and hours without moving. Uh, I mean, I can be doing like things like that or steaming or something, but I'm, I'm not moving. I'm in the chair. I don't even remember to eat or to drink. I'm very bad at, at that. So um, I like to have these reminders and then get up and, and, and do some movements uh, or even just uh, go to the floor and so on. Uh, another thing is that I love to do uh, performance art also and sometimes I got these ideas and I just like to test how would it be in the space so um, I don't I have had sometimes offers to to share with very nice people in the spaces that I would love to share with the people there but it was like a table mm or a space to paint or whatever like it didn't have the the space and i say no uh how big is this space that you have now to work i don't know maybe we can measure it they have a, <laughs> a meter either i don't know uh, more or less of course 17 okay let's <laughs> settle on 17 <laughs> and is that is that a good amount for you does it work yeah, but honestly, it's never enough. <laughs> I, I, that's very stereotypical, but I love to have a big, big space with uh, a lot of light and high ceilings. Do you store all your art here? Or? Yeah. But then you said you don't really make that much physical art. Well, I have a lot. And maybe that's the reason because I'm stopping. <laughs> um, because especially like coming from or having a heavy background in photography is like um, I have a lot of pictures printed and but then prints are still not taking that much space no no but then when you are exhibiting then you have to frame them somehow and that's the, mm. that's the thing I have been also thinking of coming back to the book format because I did my specialization in photo books and I had this fancy uh, background also, so I was thinking also in coming back that format. I'm a bit tired of exhibiting, <laughs> so I would like to to have other formats that to approach people or people to approach me. 
Yeah. I, I think in Finland there is quite many photo books also. They, like this, this medium has been pretty well developed. Mm. The book as a format of any... It doesn't need to be photography. Mm. I, I'm really... Books have been super important all my life for me, so... Do you read a lot or do you more no, have I books? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I mean, maybe you get books that are photo books and you look at them. I, I read, I read a lot, but I'm that person that doesn't read more than one book at a time. I, I admire the superpower that other people have of reading two or three books at the same time. I can't. What are you reading right now? Uh, on the one on top of that, uh, The Care Manifesto. I'm rereading it because the first time I read it, it was uh, I think the end of 2022. The politics after, after in, dependent. After Corona, it was released a bit because of all the Corona situation, and now I'm rereading it because it's really connected with this idea of caregivers and um, parents and care, the society of care. <coughs> so in that with that, I really recommend it. It's, it's really thin, easy to read. Read it, it's really nice. <laughs> I think that majority of my inspiration comes from books nowadays. A lot of inspiration also comes from rest, from resting. And it's something that I didn't allow myself so much. It is easier in this society to, to forget that uh, we are valuable, no matter if we produce or not, we can just rest and be, we are enough just being. Before I used to read a lot of sci-fi, I really love sci-fi. <laughs> and it, it also inspired me. I think in an ideal world, if I wouldn't be an artist, I would be an astronaut <laughs> or something. Music has been always so important for me. I even met my partner because we were playing together we still have a music project do you have music somewhere online where somebody could listen to it yes it's in my website and there is some songs from bandcamp and from soundcloud i think that was all okay that that went uh, fast and okay <laughs> nice experience <laughs> i recommend it <laughs> thank you for having me today and uh, thank you for coming and good luck with the project